So today, I have a uh, very proud to invite one of our international partner from KU Koi. She is Keiko Ikeda, Professor and Vice Director for the Center of Inter International Education at Kansai University and KU Coordinator for the Global Network for SUNY Koi. Right? So from here, I would like to invite her to give us some talk about the KU Koi journey. So this is her. So hello you UNP colleagues. I hope you are well and I hope you can hear me well. Can you just wave if you can hear me okay? Good. Very good to see you virtually. Um, like Dan uh, Sensei, Professor Dan was telling us, um, this is the, the generation that we're living at the moment. So we meet virtually and we meet physically, so we don't feel like it's the first time anymore if we meet for the first time. That's how the life is going at the moment. And this whole endeavor with the core of collective online international learning is all about taking advantage of this tool that we have in this era for our students. And let me explain a little bit about what we're doing with the Koya experience at Kansai University for the next 20 25 minutes. Okay? Next, please. <laughs> Okay, so let me um, explain a little bit of the introduction about Kansai University first. Um, Kansai University is a private university. I know you are national. We're private in Japan. Um, we are quite a big private university. Our student body is um, 30,000, approximately 30,000 students. At the moment, for international students, about 670 students, 700 students. With the short term visiting international students, we have approximately about 1,000 students. Faculty number, all that, you can just see the slides later. Um, we're a comprehensive university, so we have 13 departments. And um, as you can see, we list the law at the top of this 13 because we began as a law school and expanded to the comprehensive university. Um, Kansai University's growth and a future vision that I would like to share with you because this is highly related to why we're doing quail at Kansai. Um, at in terms of a student number, as you can see, for undergraduate students and postgraduate students, um, we are um, estimating that we will have more postgraduate students in the future. And also, uh, uh, we're, we're having more, more international students in the future on campus. Um, not like Malaysia or many of the ASEAN countries, uh, Japan is decreasing in its population. That means that our college level age population also decreases. So domestic undergraduate student number will decrease. In replacement, international students will, were hoping that we can actually host more students that way. So the campus is going to have to face the globalization and the global classroom as Dr. Dan was talking about. It's going to be an everyday matter. We need to actually get ready. So, I mentioned a little bit of the linkage between its globalization of Japan or Kansai University, that's the, that's the way we have to face, and the coil. And let me explain a little bit in detail why we're actually doing a coil. This is um, a part of what we have as we call it Kansai Vision. 150. Um, we are at the moment uh, 130 years old of a school. We began as a university since 1886, and we are at the moment 131 years old. And uh, next 20 minutes, uh, 20 years, excuse me, these are the things that we are actually hoping to aim. 
some of the um, uh, public policies that, that got, Professor Gunn mentioned in the early time. For internationalization, we have quite numbers of goals, policy goals that we set out. But as a part of this uh, internationalization policy goals, we actually set out to promote emerging type overseas study and training programs, increase the number of overseas partner universities and promote interdepartment agreements with them, and also produce 18-year integrated global human resource development programs in cooperation with annex schools. We have high schools and middle schools. Uh, in order to achieve that, we consider COIL as a, one of the very um, strong strategies to actually achieve those goals. This is why that we actually adapted at this stage, and hopefully that you will expand. Um, that sense that Professor Gan talked about KU COIL as the, with the SUNY COIL that uh, he already explained, and there's uh, another. Um, we actually adapted that SUNY quarter, but we also have a um, variation to adjust to Kansai University's agenda. And for Malaysia, you may actually want to do that as well. So Malaysia type coil might evolve later on. But let me explain the uh, three types that we actually offer at the moment for Kansai University in terms of virtual exchange. One is called pre KU coil. And this is really much of a class to class, but it's a one time meet, one time meeting. Um, usually that happens just once, or sometimes a couple, couple times, so just a two weeks or so, just to get a taste of what it's like to do a virtual communication between class to class. The standard model is we call it KU Coil Enhanced Model, and this is similar to um, what SUNY Coil provides. And it lasts in terms of endurance, it's about four to six weeks of exchange. So one class in our university and then one class in, in Malaysia, perhaps, a day. We, the instructors will collaborate for four to six weeks. Students might actually virtually engage with each other for that length as well. In the end, they might end up actually producing a research project or something like that. So that's a standard model, and that has more time, so it, it actually triggers more collaborative work. Third one is similar to what um, Professor Gan explained about this uh, collaborative teaching uh, with Germany. Uh, this is, we call it KU Core Extended uh, Model. So this is aiming for entire semester collaboration. So from beginning to the end, two instructors actually um, Exchanging the modules and lectures online, perhaps, uh, changing the resources and grading the students on both ends together. So, one syllabus, two classrooms. We're actually currently working on it, and we haven't had that realization at the moment. But the third one, we really like to have it happen uh, very near future. Okay, so from here on, I'm going to explain how COIL um, expanded or disseminated at campus. And this is what you're going to be facing um, from now on, now that you're, you're joining the Global Partner Network at SUNY. And there's the access and how to expand it and then make it as everybody's, everybody's business. So I will share with you the challenge and strategies that we face. One of the challenges that Kansai University um, actually gone through, and it has been at least you know, somewhat successful, is um, COIL is basically a bottom-up kind of practices. With the, with one teacher interested in doing this, engage with the overseas instructor, and then they do the collaboration. And that can be a COIL itself, but it's not a dissemination over campus. So what you need is a buy-in, really, is with the upstairs, you mean at university level, they have to see this as a good strategy as a university to achieve the goal. So Kansai, as I mentioned, Kansai Vision 150, it is definitely a meeting our purpose to internationalize a campus. 
So the university sees FOIA as a method for globalizing, globalizing university stuff. So that part, the logistics, was met perfectly. Um, another uh, challenge or a, some the step that you need to go through is to actually convince many, uh, you need to have allies. You can't just have one or two people who are running around and doing courses, and that does not call a dice of election. Then what you need to have is more faculty members, practitioners actually on board. How do you do that? First of all, um, what you're doing today is a wonderful idea. You're disseminating, spreading the idea about it, getting some people involved in it into a um, idea, buying into the idea. That's a wonderful strategy, so you already started on it. Now, the next step is a commitment. You need to actually commit to the, doing a one course through. You have to experience it. And there might be challenges and a lesson learned on it, but then you still have to get going for the next round. So some commitment is required and the support from the institutional level might actually help quite a, quite a bit. I will explain that a little bit in the data. Okay, um, strategy part, um, I'll mention that in order to do to make the coil um, happen successfully, first of all, you need to convince your own allies on your campus. So your faculty members and peers are doing the coil, they want to do the coil, but then what you need is a partner overseas. Unless your overseas partner is convinced that this is a good idea, you cannot have the coil happen. Then how do you disseminate the idea on overseas internationally? That's another thing that you need to think about. So one of the strategies that we have done at Kansai is promote that we are doing well, we're looking for partner in any opportunities that we actually um, can get. So SUNY conference, um, now that you're a global partner, um, there's an annual conference at SUNY Halls, and all the partners involved in that um, network will show up. And they're all looking for partner. It's almost like a dating partner looking for almost similar to that, but you are actually looking for partner for quite fast. So that's one nice access. Another is there are many international workshops that take place in locations like NAFSA, AIEA, AIEA, AIEA. Um, in fact, there's one um, conference that just happened, the API was actually at, in Malaysia. So um, there are maybe a domestic occasions that you can just join in to seek for partners as well. Um, KU Coil um, also um, tap into the media strategies as well. So we have homepage and Facebooks um, so that we can actually share what actually takes place in the courses that we're running on campus for Coil. So that those who are interested can actually visit that, the photos, and then they can actually see, oh, okay, we might want to work with Kansai. So a lot of ways that you need to actually tap into overseas partner as well as the domestic partners. For in-house promotion, um, in order to have more peers on board, get on board, um, we actually routinely provide workshops, online tutorials um, on the Facebook uh, group homepage. I'm sorry. Please visit the okay, KU Coil homepage when you have a chance. We have many um, course examples, um, the ways that we can support, that the office can support the faculty who are interested in Coil. Those things are all made public so that they can feel that they're not alone to actually get going with this practice. Um, Tools, IT tools, of course, this is something that not everybody, at least in, in a, a Kansai university, not everybody is IT savvy. I'm not sure about you and me. Maybe all of you are very savvy with the, um, any tools available. But um, some faculties may actually feel a bit, you know, um, shaky about using tools in class, particularly when you're actually um, trying to engage live using internet with the overseas partner. This is a very new area for many faculties. So we provide um, assistance, IT assistance, and also how to use uh, interesting tools 
that are available free on the web. So we make a YouTube channels, um, both in English and Japanese. So we make these available to our faculties as well as overseas partners if you're not feeling, you know, that good about using the new tools again. So we're trying to do many possible assistance as possible to the faculties who are actually starting up to feel comfortable. Um, just as what you're doing now, um, we actually have uh, occasions, big occasions, we call symposium and workshop in a couple times in the past three years um, to invite international partners and also domestic partners and also, of course, on-campus faculties to get together and I held a workshop. First one was held in 2014 and another one was on the next year, 2015. And in fact, two of your faculty members were um, invited to join into that 2015 uh, conference as well, and they presented it. And um, we have visited you uh, on the last year in January. Uh, that was the beginning, actually, of introduction of Poyo to you. And I am very impressed with the fact that this has evolved so fast on your end. So um, thanks to all this team at the with the Professor Gunn's team, they are really working very hard to make this happen. And this is just a new announcement, this is an informal announcement at the moment, but I'd like to share with you this news that um, we are actually um, planning on a third international symposium at Kansai University in Osaka, Japan. And this year, of course, COIL is a main theme but also, we are actually trying to make it more uh, comprehensive. So the theme is contemporary, contemporary pedagogy and assessment methods in international education. So you mentioned about practices, how to do it in, in creating the global classroom today. And then when you actually run a class, what comes to our mind as a teachers is that how to assess the students who participate in that practices in the whole classroom. So assessment is highly, highly important. So um, if you're interested in learning more about it from us, from overseas uh, keynote speakers, we are inviting a COIL consultant and also a major person in international education uh, for this occasion. Uh, and perhaps a SUNY representative may come. So if you're interested in that, this might be a choice for you. And if you're interested in coming to see us in Osaka, you're most welcome. So we'll be announcing this in the more details, but the dates will be December, the first weekend of December uh, in this year. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to just share with you this uh, uh, members that we work with at Kansai University for COIL uh, expansion. This is KU COIL support team. So um, we've got their office assistants as well as the, these uh, faculty members that who actually do COIL courses as well as supporting others who are interested in starting up with the COIL. We began in 2014. Uh, we collaborated with the three universities, so three classes was our beginning. Um, those are the partners that you saw in that uh, network map that uh, Professor Gan showed you guys. That's Glasgow Caledonian and SUNY Oswego Campus and SUNY Ulster. And from there on, this is 2017, so in three years, we evolved from the three courses to expanded the numbers of courses. That means more teachers are involved in doing COIL. And then at one point, and then sometime in 2015, we developed this KU COIL support team, which you just saw in the previous slides. So the members are, are actually fixed and assigned as their mission to actually support others and to disseminate the COIL practice on campus. And we are facing uh, 2017. We're just wrapping up a spring term for us in 2017. And uh, we're going to have a full term. Usually the full term for us is the most uh, course number, numbers of courses does the COIL happen. So we're going to get busy. 
Um, in addition to the SUNY being a part of the Global Network Partner, um, we actually developed our own um, network for COIL practices as well. Um, so what you see is a list of universities that we have done a COIL in the past, or we are about to do a COIL. Um, so several universities in US, one in Scotland, Taiwan, Malaysia, Korea, Mexico, Indonesia, Thailand, China, and Tanzania. So it's quite a widespread now. And um, further the distance, uh, the, the, actually the physical distance of the country is, is that virtual exchange seems to be more accessible to collaborate. It's hard to send the students to you know, uh, countries uh, that's very far, um, and then many students don't want to go there for a length of time, but then virtual exchange collaboration, they love to communicate. And we actually tend to do more collaboration uh, with uh, neighbors, in fact, so Asia and South and Southern Asia countries are, um, Wonderful partners for us because its time difference is very small, so live communication is doable. Okay, and this is the slide um, that actually Professor Gang created for us that when we had a collaboration with his class or his team and my class. So as you can see in the slide in the back there, there's the online survey they are actually doing at the same time on both ends. So they're getting to learn about the opinions of Japan side and Malaysia side at the same time, and they really had a good time. This is another example uh, picture uh, of a class. Uh, our class, a Kansai, is called ASEAN Studies, and we collaborate with the one class in International Islamic University in Malaysia. And uh, they're learning about Malaysia on the Japan side. And then Malaysia side also uh, exposed something about Japan and the topic, I believe, was media. It was you know, media and identity. So it was a very good uh, live communication to place. And they also actually called it on the side of a virtual Facebook and wikis and things like that. So. This one is a, um, some snippets from a collaboration with Kansai University and Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. So time difference-wise, New York and Japan has about 13 hours, 14 hours, quite large. So many of the collaboration did not take place in, in live communication. We used many of uh, virtual tools. So creating a video and send it to the other side, or using the Facebook, using Google Documents, all those things are uh, made available. And in fact, we really had a very nice collaboration together. Okay. So those are just examples that, um, just what some of the uh, examples that we have as a coil, so that you get an idea. And I'll wrap up with the, uh, mentioning about core benefits for Kansai University, why Kansai continues to actually promote COIL, and what are the good things that happen to us. Um, first thing is, we are actually meeting the goal for international digital on campus. And by doing a collaborative uh, online international learning, we made so many partners together, which was a very good benefit for uh, Kansai University as a whole. And also, we actually promoted the students' mobility because we have done a virtual exchange. Because they see somebody on the other end by face-to-face -face meeting someone in the overseas country, that triggered them to actually want to go there. So physical mobility was actually indirectly encouraged. Um, and also expanding international partnership, I already mentioned. And the fourth one, intercultural awareness and understanding. The students, even though they only have the virtual exchange, they really cultivate this intercultural awareness within themselves because they actually have a communication with real people. It's different impact from talking about it in a lecture by professors. So for Kansai University students, um, I've mentioned many of the things already. Uh, I would add also that um, because this uh, a virtual exchange requires IT use, 
um, our students actually developed more digital literacy skills, which is a part of the 21st century skills anyway. And also for, as you know, the 21st century skills as well known that it requires collaboration skills, communication skills, critical thinking skills, creativity skills. Those are all challenges that students that who are engaged in a core practice will have to face. So we're actually giving them a lot of opportunities to learn and develop the cultivated skills that are required for their future by CORE. Okay, so that will be the end of something that I wanted to share with you today. And I'll ask Professor Gunn to uh, facilitate with us for questioning and discussions. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much to Prof. Ikeda Sensei. Uh, Ikeda -sensei. So I would like to open to Q&A if there is any question and answering uh, question from the floor, please. Maybe come from I.O. I all want to ask any question. <laughs> so I have a question, maybe start for me first. And actually, how is uh, KU uh, communicate with a partner? Because uh, we have the geography time constraint, right? So mm -hmm. how is um, KU develop the communication and link up with the other university in the different country? <laughs> There are many, um, there's a many routes, actually. Um, definitely contacting the professors who you met at SUNY conference is one way. But another is many faculty members, they actually attend conferences on their own overseas. They meet somebody that they like to work with, or they might actually, you know, for example, for those who got a PhD or a master's degree overseas, they might have colleagues that who went to school together with. Those might be a good partners to start with because they know you so well. And they might have a position in overseas institutions. So um, the many personal routes, institutional routes, and we also tapped into our partners for, uh, for your interest as well. So for example, with, with the UMP, in fact, we became partners uh, first through um, I think we, we saw, I know there, that we actually met at NAFSA, and that was when we were talking not about bio, but we were talking about student mobility. We had a student exchange, so we became university partners. Then we actually visited you and mentioned about bio, and that's how the you know, interest evolved. So many ways that you can actually keep in contact. And um, through many virtual methods that you can use nowadays, so it's not an issue to contact overseas partners. So, is there any question from our UMP academicians? Oh yes, we have one. Wait, let me let me uh, go to it. You know, when you put uh, students into one uh, package like that from different countries. You normally have uh, problems with language yes. and uh, culture. So, um, so far, what kind of problems have you faced and how do you overcome these problems? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that question. It's a very good question. In fact, I did not tap on it in my presentation. I should have. Um, language is, is always going to be a challenge, for, particularly for Japan. Maybe not so much for Malaysia because uh, all of you are fine with handling English in this level of communication. And I have visited you and have visited Malaysia a couple of times. And so far, our interaction in English has not been a problem at all for most of the people. So that's a wonderful asset for you. For Japan, um, many local students that we have on campus may have very little English in communication level, but they have high level of uh, literacy level because they've been studying English from um, uh, middle school. I think. Uh, what we did for to resolve the issue is um, we're currently doing a coil with the class that are international curriculum courses, meaning that it's English media courses where international students and Japanese local students study together. 
So the Japanese students who come into the class are willing to communicate in English, or they may have a certain level of English level. And international students that we have coming from all over the world through our partnerships, they usually have a higher level of fluency. So they help each other to actually produce output to overseas. So, so far we have been doing COIL with Europe, SUNY, um, and Malaysia, uh, English-speaking regions, but then um, output so far, somehow they actually get it finished. So there are challenges, but there are many ways to actually overcome it too. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, maybe we can have uh, one more question. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Ohayo gozaimasu, Ikeda sensei. Ima asoko nanji desu ka? Ima juuji desu. Juuji onaji? Okay, I'm very interested to your explanations. Um, is it possible to my student in uh, uh, college? My college is uh, Islamic University College of Pahang, Sultan Ahmed Shah. So we want to, uh, to study basic of Japanese uh, from your 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 colleague or your departments. Mm. Maybe uh, one day we want to join uh, our colleague UMP. Uh, so through uh, UMP, mm -hmm. so we want to uh, learn something from you. Uh, let's say Japanese language, mm -hmm. and good. also we interested to uh, make uh, Ryoko Ryoko a tour. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, to your university and other place in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you for that comment or um, request. <laughs> Wonderful uh, request. That, um, happy to work with you. That's that's the first answer. And also, um, I should mention the language exchange is also something that we actually promote for using COIL method as well. We call it tandem. Tandem meaning conversational partner. So for those who want to um, study English, that's Japanese students. And for those who want to study Japanese, and they can actually be exchanged virtually. And we promote that through choir practice. So language and culture learning from each other. That's one very nice resource that we can actually tap into with the choir practice as well. And also, um, we actually do a study abroad, a short-term study visit program for our university students. And we actually add the choir part in prior or after as well. So what you mentioned is something that we already do. So if you're interested in that seeing the model, I'll be happy to show you. Okay, thank you very much. So yeah, there's uh, one more question. Come from the floor, please. Uh, good morning, if I'm good not morning. mistaken. All right. Um, I would like to ask how far this uh, KU coil uh, and SUNY coil has been involved in terms of supervising postgraduate students, oh, yes. uh, particularly uh, dealing with um, external super supervisors as well as uh, international students. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that good question. Um, we get uh, many requests uh, in the past as well, just like the one that you, you mentioned. Uh, can we do something with postgraduate level? And um, particularly for science and engineering, they want to do team collaborative project, and then perhaps, as you mentioned, like external examiner for the thesis or dissertation, for example. Um, we're still working on it, so the answer is no, we have not done experience of it. SUNY may have, um, but at the moment, as far as I know, majority of the courses are run at the undergraduate level. The postgraduate level, for example, uh, University of Venier in Canada, 
they actually do a postgraduate level collaboration on Coil. So there are some models available, and um, I think it's possible to adapt that for uh, a Malaysia case as well. And if we can work together with our faculty in the future, that'd be wonderful as well. So thank you for that. Okay. So any further question? I believe uh, uh, for the last one, if there is, maybe from IO. <laughs> oh. Okay. So I believe. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Prof Ikeda for the sharing on the KO Coin experience. And uh, thanks to all the audience from uh, UMP who are uh, very interested in the COI and in UMP uh, context is a global classroom. So I hope uh, you are going to help us to get some appointment with your faculties for us to uh, brief you more. And then we will try to connect you with the uh, KU COI as well. Okay, so I believe that my uh, sharing together with uh, Ikeda Sensei sharing already come to the end. So um, thank you very much. Is there any last word from uh, Ikeda Sensei? Thank you so much and I'd love to see you again. Okay, thank you. Bye.